Okay, so today we'll speak about morphology, but uh, before doing so, uh, it's good to review a little bit some philosophical and technical notions. Like when you say, linguistics BC, this doesn't mean uh, before Christ, it means before Chomsky for some people, because they believe that linguistics was something before Chomsky, and then it became a big revolution with Chomsky. Before Chomsky, you had the Bloomfieldians. They were uh, empiricist, behaviorist, and descriptivist, philosophically, uh, psychologically, and uh, linguistically, respectively. By opposition to these, uh, Chomsky is a uh, a rationalist, cognitivist, cognitivist psychologist, and a generative linguist. What do we mean by cognitive psychology? It means uh, the psychology of knowledge. What does the native speaker know about his language? Or what does a speaker of any language know about that language he speaks? Well, according to cognitive psychologists, he knows a set of rules and principles. So, for instance, if you are speaking English, you know that you are speaking an SVO language, and it, it has a special phonology, morphology. Of course, you can also speak about uh, semantics and logic, subject, uh, predic predicate, etc. But this is not my concern today. So the rules. Uh, you have uh, word formation or morphology draws a distinction between free morphemes and bound morphemes. So if you say anti, if you say ism, if you say n, uh, able, uh, these are bound morphemes. So, but if you say joy, happy, free, these are free morphemes, right? And uh, morphology is word formation, or how to form words. These are rules. For instance, in English, the past tense is formed with the, the addition of ed. So you have open, opened, closed, closed. So the, the child, the baby, when he reaches his... Uh, Two word stage. You have bubbling, one word stage, and two word stage. He would utter something like daddy gold because he has this rule of past tense, past tense formation. Uh, also, the plural, uh, you make it with the addition of s in English. And here I'll tell you an anecdote that happened to uh, an American lady, a black American lady, a Muslim black. Uh, American lady. She went to the bank here and uh, she started speaking. You know about doors in Arabic and she said, uh, my house has got uh, many babs. So word formation according to her is always by the addition of an S. Uh, so the baby says go and she said, oh, well, to finish with this woman, you know, she was trying to get her uh, dollars, but the Moroccan uh, clerk at the bank said, don't say dollars, say dollar. You know, this is the uh, Arabic morphology. In his minimalist program, Mr. Chomsky states something very interesting on page 66 that I will read to you very quickly. As far as the philosophy of this, uh, of this, Theory is concerned. He said the minimalist program is concerned with this is me saying the minimalist program is concerned with the place of language in the human mind brain. So it is a cognitive theory of language, cognitive psychology, by opposition to behaviorist psychology. It tries to answer the psychological question of language learnability. That is, why is it possible for the child to learn language? the human child, <coughs> excuse me. Why is it possible to the child to learn language but not 
for any other biological creature. This theory even tries to answer the philosophical question about man's uniqueness in the organic world. Language seems to be unique among the cognitive systems acquiring knowledge, and man seems to be unique in the organic world. So this is... Uh, well, I asked you to generate sentences with the words uh, A, the boy, ball and head. So try and enjoy, make this uh, exercise and let me see who is more intelligent amongst you.